untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're finally taking a look at Elish Norn, Mother of Machines as our commander. The 5 mana 4-7 Praetor has Vigilance and will double up all our entered battlefield abilities while shutting down the opponents. So an incredibly powerful commander that's worth building around. And I've split up the deck into a few different categories and as you can see there's roughly equal parts removal which is the first category then we've got mana acceleration as our second category and then card draw also very important alongside Elish Norn to get the cards flowing and then we've got a few additional cards to round out the deck so let's start by taking a look at our removal spells most of which rely on enter the battlefield abilities but we also have a few additional ones like a lay down arms perfect in a mono white deck and then source to plowshares these can also be very important in the mirror match as a way to get rid of an opposing Elish Norn since a lot of our other removal spells otherwise are going to work Portable Hole can get rid of cheaper permanents with mana value 2 or less. Then we've got Baffling Ends and Glass Casket to get rid of cheaper creatures. Ossification, another great addition, perfect in a mono white deck with a ton of planes to enchant to exile opposing creatures or planeswalkers. And then a Banishing Light and Borrow Time, very versatile as well at 3 mana. We've got Touch the Spirit Realm, which can exile opposing artifacts or creatures, but can also be channeled for one in white, in which case we essentially flicker one of our creatures, can be used to save one of our creatures from removal, but can also be used to re-enable an Enter the Battlefield ability, so very flexible as well. Then a Loran can blow up opposing artifacts and enchantments. Skyclave Apparition exiles opposing permanents with mana value 4 or less that aren't tokens. And then a Cast Out can also be cycled for 1 mana if we just want to draw, otherwise a 4 mana removal spell that we can play at instant speed. And then a Static Net is very similar, and now with Elish Nord out, not only do we get to exile 2 opposing non-land permanents, but we also get to gain 4 life now and make 2 tapped Power Stone tokens, which we can use to activate abilities or cast some of our artifacts, such as Sky Sovereign, which can deal 6 damage, 2 times 3 with Elish Nord out when it enters, and then 3 more when it attacks as a 6-5 flying vehicle, got Meteor Golem to destroy opposing permanents when it enters, and then a Portal to Phyrexia makes the opponent sacrifice 3 creatures when it enters, so with Elish Norn out we make them sacrifice 6 creatures instead. A bit overkill, typically 3 is enough, but why not? And then every turn we can also reanimate a creature from a graveyard. Then our next category is Mana Acceleration, where we've got the Classics at 2 mana with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. We've got a recent addition in Mirror Convert, another 2 mana accelerant for non-green decks, and then Ornithopter of Paradise, another 2 mana accelerant. And then at 3 mana, there's Heraldic Banner, naming white to pump up our white creatures, make 1 mana. Good mana Geode to scry 1, so it can also be doubled with Elish Norn out. And Skyclave Relic, another good one that can be kicked to make additional tokens. The Celestis can give us some card selection and gain life as it switches between day and night. Hedron Archive can make 2 mana right away to maybe still cast an artifact afterwards. Can also be cashed in for 2 additional cards. And then Key to the Archive is the only card that doesn't exist in paper. So if you're trying to build this deck in paper, this is the only card you'll have to replace. Otherwise I typically avoid alchemy cards. Also another powerful accelerance that can maybe draft a fun card from the spellbook. And then uh, Solemn can also help us ramp by finding a planes when it enters and draw a card when it dies. And Gilded Lotus immediately makes 3 mana to maybe still play something afterwards. Mindstone and Weakstone can also double up with Elish Norn to either draw 4 cards total or give several creatures minus 5 minus 5. Can also choose to draw 2 and give a creature minus 5 minus 5 if you want to split it up. And then also makes 2 mana for artifacts or abilities. And finally Caged Sun, a relatively recent addition from the Brothers War, can enter the battlefield naming white, giving our white creatures plus one plus one, and then our lands will also produce double the amount of white mana, which can be very fun, especially when we need to replay Elish Norn a few times. And then our third big category is card draw, where we have Thraben Inspector making a clue token when it enters, Ambitious Farmhand will draw a planes essentially to help hit our land drops, Potion of Healing will draw when it enters, can be sacrificed to gain 3. Rune of Sustenance can also enchant one of our lands if we don't have a creature to enchant to give it lifelink otherwise, and then we'll also draw when it enters. Companion A11 that draws, and then we've got a few utility artifacts that, besides drawing, provide an additional effect. Sleeper Dart can keep an opposing creature tapped down. Spare Supplies we can sacrifice once it's in play to draw an additional card, and Wedding Invitation can also be sacrificed to make a creature unblockable. Then Overseer, the better version of Priest of Ancient Lore, both gain a life and draw a card. Sky Scanner, just a 1-1 flyer that draws. And Sanctuary Warden at 6 mana can remove shield counters from itself to draw a card and make a citizen token. And can also maybe remove other counters from our permanents to make those same citizen tokens and draw. 
and then Immortal Sun, a nice card draw engine that discounts all our spells by one, and can also shut down all Planeswalkers, and we only have one in our deck, so it's mostly going to be affecting the opponent. And finally, Combat Thresher, a 3-mana 1-1 double strike that draws when it enters, can also be cast for 7-mana as a 3-3 double strike. Also a very fun card to flicker, since we can play it for 3-mana, flicker it, still draw a card, and then get the 7-mana 3-3 double strike version afterwards. Then our next section includes Charming Prince, which is quite versatile, can either scry 2, gain 3 life, or potentially flicker another creature. And with Elish Norn out, we can potentially flicker two other creatures, which in turn will also potentially enable their Enter the Battlefield abilities twice, so that can get out of hand very quickly. Blade Splicer will make a 3-3 Golem token when it enters, it's also a very fun way to get on the board, and as long as we control the Splicer, our Golem tokens will have First Strike. Spellbinder can disrupt the opponent's hand by taking away a card, making it cost 2 more to cast. Feldar Retreat also works very well with Elishnorn, since we get to double up on the landfall triggers, making additional 2-2 tokens or putting plus 1 counters on the team and giving them vigilance until end of turn. We've got Restoration Angel, similar to Charming Prince, can also flicker one of our creatures, and this one we can play at instant speed, it's also excellent to maybe save Elishnorn from spot removal. Then the Reverend Hoplite can make an army of 1-1 tokens, equal to our Devotion to White, which can also get out of hand very quickly. Regal Caracal makes two 1-1 one, one lifelinking cat tokens, giving them plus one plus one for as long as we control the 3-3 three, three Lord. And then at the Eternal Wander, also very versatile in this deck, the plus one can flicker our own creatures or artifacts, and can also potentially take opposing artifacts or creatures out of commission for a whole turn cycle. The zero ability making 2-2 two, two double striking samurai, and then minus four kind of a pseudo sweeper effect, where we get to keep our best card while keeping the opponent's worst card in play. And then we've got additional ways to double up on our triggers with Panharmonicon, which is very similar to Elishnorn, only works with creatures and artifacts, so enchantments won't trigger twice, so it's a bit worse in that regard, but as an artifact it's a bit more difficult for the opponent to interact with. Teleportation Circle will get to flicker one card every turn, including creatures and artifacts, so it can also flicker some of our artifacts that maybe draw when they enter. And then Ephemerate, a 1-mana instant that will flicker a creature and also as a rebound, so we get to cast it again on our following turn. So it can also provide a ton of value, or maybe be used to save a creature from removal. And then our miscellaneous section includes Curse of Silence to name the opponent's commander, make it cost 2 more, at which point we can sacrifice it when the opponent casts it to still draw a card. As per Sentinel, a staple in any white brawl deck, as it will attack opposing non-creature spells. And then Emirios Call is both a land and a 7-mana play to make a pair of 4-4 Angel tokens, making other non-angels indestructible until our next turn. And then the mana base is mostly white, since we want to have a lot of white mana for Cage Sun, and we also need a lot of planes for Laydown Arms, so I didn't go overboard with the utility lanes. Still have Castle Ardenvale to make 1-1 tokens, Iganjo can be channeled to deal 4 damage, Good Arch of Raska, which can be a nice card draw engine in the late game once we reach the City's Blessing. Crystal Grotto gets to scry one when it enters, so with Elishnor and Aunt we get to scry one twice. Same with the Jalfren Void. Fabled Passage is here because of our Felda Retreat, so we can enable Landfall twice. Nykthos can also give us a mana boost if we have a high Devotion count. Then Radiant Fountain gains two when it enters, whereas Sunscorched Desert deals one to the opponent or a Planeswalker they control, so that's the main purpose of the desert. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Jenga Taxius, so Mono Blue could have quite a few counter spells as well. But uh, yeah, in general, Jenga Taxius can be quite scary once it's in play. Have a few removal spells and at least enchantments don't get countered, so we'll give this a try. Got a better ramp with Mindstone and Celestas at least. We'll hang on to Desert for as long as possible in case we can maybe damage a Planeswalker. For now play Mindstone. That seemed to resolve. And into the Royal will bounce it. Fair enough. Opponent might have some ramp artifacts of their own. See an unstable obelisk. And we'll go for Celestus here. Get the day and night cycle started. And I could already play Elishnorn next turn. Although, if our opponent keeps up mana, I'm probably gonna wait. And then Laydown Arms is not at its best here, since Jink Taxis can just counter it. So it's not really an answer. So we'll get rid of it. Lotus is nice. Unlikely to resolve, but probably still worth a shot. Alright, we did resolve it. So now I can Mindstone if we make white and still play Companion. 
There's also an argument for not playing Companion until after we play Elishnorn. But uh, they might be holding their counter spells for our commander. So we've got a lot of mana here. Of course, something like a River's Rebuke could still send it back. And our opponent did have a Tail's End, which could have countered our Legendary. Counters our card draw instead. Discard the Planes. Alright, so we're not in a bad spot, but we could use more ETB effects in hand to maybe pull ahead. Expertise, gonna bounce all three artifacts and put something in play for free. But doesn't seem like they had anything. Okay. Just replay Lotus, which also replays Celestus. And then we'll wait on our Scry to maybe Scry twice with Elishnorn in play. Definitely possible our opponent had a wash away for one mana to counter Elishnorn. Now we search for Ascanta. That is potentially worth exiling, although they're not close to transforming it into a land yet. So, yeah, I think it's time for Elishnorn. Likely gets countered. And then we can still Mindstone and Idle afterwards. Get the artifacts in play before Jingitaxis comes down, and indeed our opponent had a wash away in hand. So for now we'll deal one damage with the desert, keep the doubles cry. Idol plus Mindstone. Could also immediately draw with the Mindstone, although I might still need the extra mana if we need to replay Elishnorn a few times. So our opponent is down to one card in hand at least. Mills and Ulamog, so they're going big. And with a land they could cast Jingitaxis, it's going to be a kick to Relic instead. So next turn Jin's going to come down, but we should be able to resolve Elishnorn. And we even have a nice follow-up with both Voids and Potion. Can tap Mindstone and probably won't need Idol. So it's Cry 2 first. Don't need Mano Geode anymore. And a Priest is fine. So I can play Potion, draw into the Priest. And then I'm still gonna wait on Banishing Light until after Jingataxis comes down. Ooh, a Fading Hope was their last card. Alright, that's too bad. So I won't be able to replay Elishnorn, but at least we can play it for 5 mana next turn. So we miss out on the double trigger, not gonna play Priest now, just gonna hit for one. Well, the opponent has six cards in Graveyard, so Search is about to transform. Hmm, maybe I should just exile the Search for Ascanta, let them keep Jingitaxis in play, and then not have Search as a mana sink. Sure. And then we can still play Lishnorn and Priest to pull ahead. And then they'll need to top deck spells to get value from Jin. Now I will probably leave my Mindstone untapped. Skyclave can get rid of a few permanents and so can Static Net. That was a great draw here. Exile Jin, and probably the Unstable Obelisk as well. Make two Power Stone tokens, gain four life. And opponent sends Jin back to the command zone. And then I'll probably draw with Mindstone here as well. Have enough mana in play. Okay, Banner can pump the team next turn. Apparition cannot exile tokens, but can still get rid of the Relic itself. Although now Banner would get countered by Jin. I guess I still prefer Banner getting countered, so I can draw two with Sleeper Dart. Use the Power Stones we made last turn. So it's the Praetor standoff here. Ooh, nice Comet Thresher. 
we'll be able to draw two cards. Could have also cast it for seven mana, but I don't think I'm too concerned here. Nykthos can generate a lot of mana as well, especially after we play Skyclave Apparition. And then we can keep going off with Charming Prince and Thraven Inspector, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Sadistic Pilgrim, so kind of a sacrifice deck. Our hand's not bad, we've got a lot of cheap interaction. Could use a bit more ramp, but at least Farmhand gets an extra planes. So, if they play their commander, I would have been tempted to away to Portable Hall. Now we cancel Portable Hall the Signet. And then next turn play Farmhand plus maybe a Swords if needed. Could also Swords now, which might be fine. Still have Ossification for bigger things later. And then Teleportation Circle will be awesome once we get it going. Can flicker a Comet Thresher and have it come back as a 3-3 double strike. Opponent playing out some cheaper creatures. And yeah, we'll give a Thresher a try. Can hold off the 1-1s one -ones as well. Can cycle cast out if we're gonna miss our land drop next turn. If not, Teleportation Circle looks fun. Okay, Rankle can force us to sacrifice, so probably get rid of Farmhand. And then we might have to Ossification Rankle now. Gonna have to discard as well. Can let go of a Sky Scanner perhaps. Okay, Curse of Silence can name their commander. Ossification the Rankle. And then we'll have to wait a turn to hopefully pick up a land. I might as well attack for two. Aerialists will immediately pick up a plus one counter. So that will definitely turn into a problem. Alright, found a land, so just gonna go for teleportation circle. Hope there's no removal. And then we'll have our 3-3 that draws a card. Opponent gets back Skeleton. So next turn I'll have to decide between maybe cast out the Aerialists. Or if we draw lands, could play Elish Norn. So Thresher draws two cards. Savior can protect a creature, but does not help against cast out exiling the Aerialist. And now a Bastion to start draining us as well. But yeah, Aerialist is the only real threat at the moment. Found a land. Could also play Caracol, flicker it, make a whole bunch of cat tokens. Or we can just play Elish Norn and then next turn cast out would deal with both Aerialist and Bastion. And we'll get to draw two of Thresher in the meantime. And then, is there any point in attacking? I guess might as well. Put on take six. And we'll get our Thresher back on defense anyway. Could also flicker Portable Hole at some point to maybe get rid of a Skeleton. Alright, not bad. So they get one last turn to get a bunch of damage in. We'll sack the Curse. No trigger from Pilgrim entering, so no life gain of Veteran. I have 6 mana, so could go Archive into Cast Out. Exile Bastion and Aerialist. I 
and then probably don't want to attack with Thresher now, since they could block with a Death Toucher and make it indestructible. And then maybe next turn we'll flicker Portable Hole, although we'll have many better targets to flicker as well. Ooh, a Liliana. It's actually the perfect draw here. Make a sacrifice two creatures. So goodbye, Elishnorn. Glad we got rid of the Bastion, at least. Gwen gets a bunch of triggers, gets to draw off Liliana. Yeah, can't think of many better top decks. And now we fall all the way down to three. So we've got our work cut out for us. At least we have a lot of mana to work with. So we have seven, eight, nine mana total. So no real way to get rid of Liliana this turn. So making life-linking tokens with Caracol might be the move. And then I could even play a Panharmonicon first and then hope our opponent can't kill us with Pilgrim, but doesn't seem to be the case right now. So we get twice the tokens and then twice again after flickering. And then maybe next turn we can exile the Pilgrim by flickering Portable Hole. And now we also have a lot of cats to pressure Liliana. Okay, the Witch is pretty good. Opponent gains life, so can reanimate a creature end of turn. Liliana makes a zombie. And a scorpion, uh-oh. Yeah, but they can sacrifice scorpion, that's two more damage. Although it doesn't seem like they have a sacrifice outlet. So we'll have to sacrifice a cat. Opponent gets back skeleton. Alright, so... Should have enough attackers to pressure Liliana. Would like to get rid of the witch before attacking. So, Warden seems like a fine play. Could have also gone for Rune of Sustenance, although we only draw one since it's not an artifact, so we don't get to double Panharmonicon trigger. And then Sanctuary Warden plus Teleportation Circles, also a great combo to reset the shield counters. Hoping to find an answer to Liliana before trading off a bunch of creatures and letting the opponent draw. So let's see what we get. We'll remove two shield counters, find lanes, and sleeper dart. Hmm. So sleeper dart could draw two once again, although it's not like we have a ton of cheap removal spells left, but I guess it's still probably the play here. Draw two. And a priest. Okay, so we will be smashing into Liliana. Although it seems like our opponent may have disconnected as well here. So yeah, go straight to damage. Otherwise there might have been a bunch of trades happening. But now it seems like we've taken hold of the game quite comfortably. And then I could still play Rune of Sustenance or just play Arcane Signet. Flicker Sanctuary Warden end of turn. Or we could flicker Caracol to make more cats on defense, which is maybe safer. Pass it back. And if our opponent has disconnected, they're probably going to explode in a second here. But yeah, we got to see the power of teleportation circle. Despite missing a couple land drops, it still helped us catch back up and provide a ton of value here. Flickering Thresher to draw, Caracol to make cats, and eventually Warden to reset the shield counters, make more tokens, draw more cards. And that's even without Elish Nord in play. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Ivy, typically a pretty aggressive mutate deck, can be quite scary to face. Our hand's lacking some cheap interaction, I really want some removal in this matchup. And yeah, once again, I don't think this hand will do. This is a bit better. And then don't have anything to flicker with Ephemerate, so that probably has to go. At least a turn to idle, turn three cast outs. And opponent starting with his signet as well. 
And a Shadow Spear, we don't really mind. Immortal Sun gives us a late game card draw engine. Although we would prefer more removal here. Could maybe hang on to Aigancho. It's gonna be a Thrumming Bird. Into Ivy, so points tapped out at least. Yeah, let's just cast out Ivy while we can. We're not likely to send it back to the command zone. And then we don't mind if cast out gets removed later. Unless our opponent has a way to destroy enchantments. In which case they might leave Ivy under the cast out. Okay, Ivy is back in the command zone. Catgeist can draw when it hits us. And visionary to ramp. Nothing to proliferate with the Thrumming Bird. We're just gonna run out Elishnorn here and hope it survives. Opponent's got one card left. Wash Away could counter it. Looks like we're in the clear. Hydra's Growth on the Thrumming Birds. Doesn't trigger, so they don't get a counter to begin with. So actually not very effective here. Okay, can Scry one twice. Set up our next few draw steps, and then I'm going for Immortal Sun instead of Felder Retreat. Farm hands doesn't seem all that great. Smash for five. Okay, looks like we're doing okay here. Uncontested Elishnorn about to make a bunch of cat tokens with Felder Retreat, Immortal Sun to draw, and no Ivy in play, so. Makes potential top decks a lot less scary. Opponent activates Visionary. And the Throwing Bird can hit us for two. But yeah, Elishnorn shuts down a lot of cards that you may not expect it to, like Hydra's Growth. So, play Retreats, maybe after playing a Lotus. And play land afterwards. And we'll start by making tokens before pumping them up. Still have Iganjo available as removal. Can be channeled for two mana. Support so jumps with the cat guys since they can put it on Ivy and get a copy on Thrumming Bird. Which is pretty good here. But hopefully we can take one of them out. Borrower to bounce Elishnorn. Still lets us channel for three mana and can replay it pretty easily. So, not the end of the world. This opponent will get their copy, and then probably take out the Thrumming Bird as opposed to Ivy now. Their opponents draw a Protection Spell as their last card. Yep, they sure did. Tyvar stands, okay. Now our opponent's certainly back in the game. We're down to 10, opponent gets to draw two cards. At least they're tapped out for now, so we could top deck a removal spell, play Elishnorn, exile both of the opponent's creatures. Alright, not the best set of draws. So, yeah, just play Elishnorn. And then I can animate my... Guardian Idol, and probably have to go for plus one counters now to apply a bit more pressure. Point falls to 14, and we're potentially taking six in the air here. Could be dead to a pump spell. So it takes six, put on draws two. And goes back up to seventeen. Although with a land and Felda retreat we can certainly deal seventeen damage, even past a potential blocker. So there's a visionary. They could move the Shadow Spear, but they don't. Ooh, nice glass casket. And Loran. Those are two good top decks. 
So kick things off with Loron. Can also destroy the Visionary. Opponent slips out Elishnor in a response. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Kinda regretting not playing the planes first now. Still get to take out Visionary. And then if I animate Guardian Idol, that's currently a 4-4, put a counter on my team. Then I would still have Lethal here, there's no interaction. And then we can still Glass Cascade if needed. Opponents channeling Cultivation to make a 1-1 blocker, yeah, that's gonna keep them alive. And they still have the mana to flash in Brazen Borrower. So even though Glass Casket exiles one of the opponent's two creatures, they're still gonna have lethal next turn. Yeah, took a pretty specific combination of cards here, but uh, opponent found a way. So exile Thrumming Bird. But Brazen Borrower alongside Ivy will cross the finish line. Incredibly close game. And needed to find our glass casket a turn sooner. And Elishnor not in place, so it doesn't even stop Uro here. Not that it matters. Burn can escape it while they're at it. But yeah, we're empty handed, so. They can attack for the win. Okay. Close one here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the five color shrine deck. Our hands missing some accelerations. So we'll take a mulligan. This is better. Turn two Cold Seal Hearts into an Archive. I've got Restoration Angel to flicker something. Still missing a creature with a nice ETB effect. So hopefully we can find one of those. A removal spell could also be handy. And we'll play this one tapped, even though there is a chance I could have cast it for seven mana with all this ramp. Still have a spare supplies as a decent mana sink. And I'm probably going to wait to play it until after Elishnorn. Okay, Sithis is a problem. And Elishnorn doesn't stop it since it's on cast and not on ETB. So, definitely a scary card to face early on. Cage Sun can make even more mana. So, I've got the mana sorted, just needs some payoff spells. Champion another card draw engine for the opponent. Okay, can go Archive into Ornithopter now, nice and efficient. So opponents establishing their card draw engines, but typically it's better to get your mana going first and then... Once you have a lot of mana, it's easier to deploy all the extra cards you draw. So I'm actually not too sad with this start from our opponents. Campaign to make us discard. What do I get rid of? Maybe discard Restoration Angel, since I don't really have any creatures worth flickering yet. And then we'll take two from Champion. Fellow Retreat could be nice. So if we play a Cage Sun, tapping all my artifact mana first. I'm still gonna have enough mana to play Fellow Retreat afterwards. That looks good. And then next turn, we can go Elishnorn into Spare Supplies and hopefully pull ahead. So I've yet to see some Shrines from the Shrine deck, but I'm sure that's about to change. Okay, Hallowed Haunting starts making tokens whenever the opponent plays an enchantment. It's another kind of slow setup card. So we'd love to pick up one of our removal spells. 
Next turn, how much mana are we working with? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So Elishnorn into spare supplies. Still leaves a bit of mana left over. Okay, start with Elishnorn. Opponent could have a wash away to counter Elishnorn, actually. That would be a bit of a setback, but not much I can do about it. Okay, that resolved. So draw two with spare supplies. And a Nykthos doesn't generate a whole lot of mana at the moment, so we're better off with the planes. And then I might want to draw with Hedron Archive. Retreat will just make some tokens here. Yeah, let's draw with Archive. See if I pick up something useful. A banner. Okay. Name White. So not the turn we were hoping for, but we can draw more with the spare supplies next turn. And hopefully string together some fun plays. Also possible playing a Guardian Idol last turn instead of Banner could have worked out better if we plan to animate it. Ooh, Cleansing Nova, destroying all artifacts and enchantments. Not a play I was expecting here, out of the enchantment deck. But yeah, fair enough, does set us back a bit. Don't have any good attacks. And uh, we're lacking the card advantage. Wrath of God now to destroy all creatures. Alright, we'll just replay Lishnorn. Point still has quite a few cards in hand, so they've got a more controlling approach to the enchantment deck. Ilishnorn into Fountain, gain four. Still waiting on some card draw. At least Elishnorn can shut down some opposing removal spells and enchantment form that rely on an enter the battlefield ability. Honden will start drawing, so that's a scary one. And Idyllic Tutor to find any enchantment. Could get another shrine here. Maybe the five color one. Well, their opponent seems to be missing red mana, so they can't actually cast it yet. Opponent finds a Sanctum Weaver to make more mana. Is it possible they have some red cards in hand as we keep drawing lands? Okay, not much to do besides animate idle attack for six, and hope to draw some action spells soon. Opponent jumping with Companion. Taking two down to 25. So our opponent gets to draw an extra card. And now with the Weaver, they'll be able to empty their hand very quickly. Okay, at least Elishnorn shuts down the extra token from the Life's Origin. And the Rune of Mortality is also not going to draw here. Just an extra enchantment to make mana with a Sanctum Weaver. So at least Elishnorn's being effective, despite not providing any extra triggers for us. There we go, companion draw two. That's how we kick things off. Mindstone can draw, and the Sky Sovereign can deal a bunch of damage. So if I Mindstone draw, I'll still have the mana to Sky Sovereign, and maybe we'll find something better. Okay, just gonna play Sky Sovereign and then can't quite kill both creatures. Which one is scarier? Sanctum Weaver fixes for reds. Life's Origin is an extra shrine for the seeing winds. I think Sanctum Weaver is more important since the opponent tutored for it. Okay, opponent cycles a cast out, which doesn't do much with Elish Norn out. And we'll hit for four. Opponent draws two, and then one for turn. 
So yeah, it's scary keeping the life's origin in play. Definitely a close call. The upside of killing life's origin last turn is that just by attacking with Sky Sovereign we can kill Sanctum Weaver. And our opponent did find red mana now. So they'll be able to cast whatever they have in hand. Just uh, life's origin getting back Sithis for now. That's okay. Can take it out with a Sky Sovereign attack. And a Borrow Time is not going to do anything besides drawing with Sithis. And a Rune of Flight. Also just to draw one here. Okay, still hoping for some good top decks. Geode at least lets us cry too. Thresher draws, I'll keep. And we can play it for the full price next turn. So, Crew Sky Sovereign animates idle and attack. Opponent falls to 11, but they get to draw three cards total once again. Thresher also crews Sky Sovereign, so we're potentially attacking for lethal, but I imagine opponent's going to produce a few blockers here. Get back Hallowed Haunting, yep. Yeah. That's a good starting point. This one also triggers on cast, and it's not on ETB. And a Shatter the Sky to wipe the board. Alright, so we'll have to reset here. Replaying Elishnorn. And then maybe play a cheaper Comet Thresher to draw to. Still gonna be attacking for 6 with Sky Sovereign. Ooh, and a Caracal. So let's start there. Okay, those are some good draws. Attack for six. Opponent gets to see two new cards. They've cast their fair share of sweepers already, so hopefully we can now finally pull ahead with Elishnorn. If not, just kill the opponent with a Sky Sovereign. But our opponent does already have five enchantments in play, but doesn't look like they can get there. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a 5-color Joda deck. Always scary to face, our hands missing some early ramp, and don't think Glass Cask is going to be particularly effective. Once again, Portable Hole could get rid of a ramp artifact at least, but I really want some acceleration. This is better. And then might have to get rid of Caracal, keep the ramp, Loran for opposing artifacts, and then Overseer to draw some cards. And then we can hang on to Fountain for as long as possible, in case we can play it after Elishnorn enters the battlefield. Okay, key to the archive was a great draw. Opponent's got their own signets. I think I still prioritize key. And do we want any of these? Joda has three toughness, I could take it out with a lightning bolt. Although sleeper dart to draw to might be better, honestly. So I think we grab the bolt and then discard it. And then hope to draw lane, so I can maybe play Elishnorn and Sleeper Dart, draw two right away. Or we could deal with some opposing artifacts. Okay, there's Joda. And a borrowed time was excellent as well. Instead of playing Elishnorn, we could just do some damage control, borrow time Joda, and then Loran destroy Signet. We'll set him back quite a bit. And then next turn try Elishnorn. And then still keep the card draw to double up in hand. A lantern. Can make one mine of any color and a boots to protect Joda going forward. Alright, there's our lane, so Elishnorn into sleeper darts. Charming Prince could be excellent, and a portal as well. 
Don't think I'm drawing with Loran. Want to keep the card draw all to myself. Scarab God could eventually become a problem, but for now it's fine. So we'll take our draw step. Castle's good. So how much mana are we working with? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Not quite enough for a portal, but let's kick things off with an Overseer. And a Meteor Golem's going to be excellent as well. Can't cast that one right now. So Charming Prince can flicker both Loran and Overseer, destroy two of the opponent's artifacts, and draw two more cards. That's going to be pretty bank-breaking. Okay, no point in attacking. Pono's hanging in there. There's no creatures in Graveyard for Scarab God to get back. Just have to watch out for a potential sweeper effect. And yeah, there's a Depopulate. So that will reset our board. Could have also left Elish Norn in the Graveyard to then maybe get back with a portal later. Which is certainly reasonable. Nothing for us to destroy at the moment with Portal, so probably better to hang on to it. And then... Can uh, play Banner. Four, five, six, seven, and then still play Elish Norn afterwards. Or we can play Mirios Call. I think Banner into Elish Norn's fine. And then if they destroy it, I might leave it in the graveyard now. Just have to watch out for Scarab God potentially exiling it and turning it into a token. Heirloom could also go after our graveyard, so could be effective against our portal to Phyrexia. Meteor Golem or Banishing Light could get rid of the Heirloom to slow the opponent down. Maybe go for the more expensive Meteor Golem first. Keep the cheaper Banishing Light to maybe double spell later. And our opponent has seen enough, too many of their ramp artifacts gone, and the five color deck needs those to cast their spells. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Moldrotha, three color graveyard value deck. Our hands, okay, uh, missing a two mana ramp card, but archive on four should be pretty effective. So I'll try it. If we're gonna miss our land drops, Overseer can help. Do we spare supplies on two? Yeah, I guess that maybe means we can hang on to the Overseer for later. Baffling on to maybe exile a mana creature. Like a Karyotid, perfect. And then hope to draw land next turn. If not, can sacrifice spare supplies as opposed to playing companions, since companions can be better after we play Lishnorn. Found a land anyway. So now Archive, Sacrifice, Spare Supplies can do that in the opponent's turn too. And then we're looking at Seelish Norn into something else next turn. As your opponent gets their Fiend Artisan going. Grows with a number of creatures in the graveyard. Can sacrifice creatures to tutor stuff up. And of course Grizzly Salvage good alongside Moldrotha. Putting stuff in the graveyard to get back. Okay, so I can play Elish Norn and then still Companion to draw to. That looks okay. And then if we get to keep our Elish Norn next turn, we can go off destroying multiple things with Meteor Golem or Borrowed Time. Conduit can replay lands out of the graveyard, and Infernal Grasp sadly deals with Elish Norn. Okay. Seven mana to replay. Could still try to go for it next turn. Or we can uh, maybe deal with the Conduit in the meantime. Although Meteor Golem 
taking out Conduit and something else would be a lot more exciting. So, yeah, I think it's just Elish Norn tap land. Hope they don't have a second removal spell. And then we can make a lot more progress with Elish Norn in play. A lot of creatures that would be able to kill Elish Norn probably rely on an ETB effect. So those wouldn't work. So Conduit just replaying a Lurgoyf. That one does not rely on an ETB effect, so opponent mills a bunch of cards. Can have a quick look here. Lots of graveyard synergy, as you would expect. But yeah, if we get to untap with Elishnorn, I'm happy. So we have six, seven, eight mana total. Probably want to start by drawing with Invitation, see if we can hit our land drop. And then I could still double meter golem. Okay. So yeah, double golem, destroy conduits, destroy fiend artisan most likely. Could have also gone with some of the cheaper options to exile instead, since of course opponent can still replay things out of the graveyard with Moldrotha after we destroy them. Poseju to deal with our golem, that's fine. It's not gonna stop the trigger from killing their stuff. Poseidon would have been pretty effective against cards like Borrow Time, however, so glad we went this way. And then if our opponent runs out Moldrotha, we can exile it in a few different ways. Even though it'll get a little bit of value from it first. So they could replay the Fiend Artisan we just destroyed. And then the Channel Lands can also be replayed from the Graveyard. But yeah, this is going to be the big turning point. So how do we want to start? Probably with Overseer, draw two, gain two. Build up our Devotion for Hoply to make a bunch of tokens. Then Borrow Time, less flexible than Touch here when we're exiling creatures for the most part. Exile Muldrotha and Fiend Artisan. And... Opponent has to decide whether to send Muldrotha back to the command zone or not, but they concede instead. Yeah, you can see how once we do get to untap with Elish Norn, the game can get out of reach very quickly for the opponent. Building up our devotion, Hoplite about to make over 10 tokens when it enters. We've got plenty more card draw coming up, and can maybe hang on to touch the Spirit Realm to exile a creature in response to removal, or to re-enable an ETB effect. Alright, so we get to see our Monowhite Elish Norn Brawl deck in action. And yeah, Elish Norn does not mess around, an incredibly powerful commander, played best alongside a bunch of ramps so we can replay Elish Norn if it gets removed, and then a bunch of card draw and removal, and that's a pretty good recipe to beat a lot of Brawl decks. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.